Director Richard Kelly had been working on his film Donnie Darko since 1997, when he had just graduated from high school. It's now 2001, and his trippy time travel opus is debuting at Sundance. And while he could most definitely spend well over an hour thanking the various people who helped bring the film to life, it is one key member of his team that deserves just a little more thanks. Her name is Drew Barrymore. How did the actress who had just recently started her own production company help the movie become a reality? Well, sit back, relax, grab a warm and fuzzy bunny outfit, and let's find out how Drew Barrymore saved Donnie Darko. Before we jump into the video, don't forget to uppercut and roundhouse the like and subscribe buttons, and give the notification bell a headbutt. It would really help support my channel. And now, back to the show. Drew Barrymore has been in the entertainment business since 1978. In 1982, she became world famous with her memorable role in Steven Spielberg's E.T., playing the role of Gertie. However, by the mid to late 80s, Barrymore had gone through a highly publicized bout with drug and alcohol abuse, all of this while still in her early teen years. She wrote a book called Little Girl Lost that chronicled her battle with substance abuse. Finally, by the mid-90s, Drew started to take charge of her life. She cleaned up her act and started taking on eclectic roles in movies like Boys on the Side, Scream, The Wedding Singer, and Ever After, which my mom and sister dragged me to the Dollar Theater to see. This reignited Drew's career and got her some much-deserved acclaim. By 1999, she had starred in and produced a movie called Never Been Kissed, her first film through her production company, Flower Films. The movie had a budget of $25 million and was a small hit for the company. It grossed over $55 million in the US and an additional $29 million overseas for a total of $84.5 million worldwide. Her next major project as producer and star was the hit film adaptation of the popular 70s TV series, Charlie's Angels. This was a big hit for her and proved that she was a force to be reckoned with. It was a fun, lighthearted action film with energetic and goofy performances. It grossed $264 million worldwide on a budget of $93 million. After the success of her Charlie's Angels adaptation, Drew decided to put her attention into a strange little indie film called Donnie Darko. Here's a quick synopsis of the plot. After escaping a bizarre accident, troubled teenager Donnie Darko is plagued by visions of a man in a large rabbit suit who manipulates him to commit a series of crimes. As Donnie becomes interested in a book called The Philosophy of Time Travel, events unfold that lead to shocking revelations. Donnie Darko and its director Richard Kelly had been struggling to secure funding for the film for some time. The fact that Richard Kelly was insisting on directing the script he wrote wasn't helping matters much either. You see, out of the blue one day, actor Jason Schwartzman called the director and expressed his desire to star in the film. At this point, the script had been passed all around Hollywood and it was starting to lose steam. When Schwartzman joined the production, the film got a second wind. Producer Nancy Javonin, who was Drew Barrymore's producing partner over at Flower Films, contacted Donnie Darko's production team. She was curious as to what Jason Schwartzman was doing next because she and Barrymore were huge fans of the movie Rushmore. Well, Drew decided that she not only wanted to produce the film, but she also wanted the role of Karen Pomeroy, the English teacher. The role had originally been written for someone much older, but that was quickly changed to suit Barrymore. Drew playing a younger teacher was actually a benefit to the film. It helped to bring out her character's contrast to the older, more experienced teachers who were more rigid in their thinking. By the way, Barrymore was only five years older than the eventual star Jake Gyllenhaal. Almost instantly, Drew's involvement gave the film a legitimacy that helped garner the film a $4.5 million production budget. However, one thing Drew was inadvertently responsible for was the departure of Jason Schwartzman. Both he and Barrymore's schedules were tight. They both had to finish filming in time to be on other sets due to prior commitments. Barrymore's schedule demands were out of sync with Jason's and he dropped out as quickly as he had joined. This sent director Richard Kelly into a tailspin. He worried that the whole movie would either be scrapped or end up in the bargain bin section of Walmart. He also worried that with the departure of Schwartzman, Drew Barrymore would drop out as well. But to her immense credit, she acted like the supportive producer she is and gave Richard Kelly her reassurance. She left a voicemail on his phone saying, I'm in this for you. We're going to find a new Donnie and we're going to make a great film. Kelly, understandably, had a huge wave of relief wash over him. And just like that, the project was back on track. 
Eventually, Jake Gyllenhaal was cast as the iconic Donnie Darko, and filming got underway. The film shot and wrapped after 28 days. Interestingly enough, the number 28 holds significance to this film in three ways. The number of days it roughly took to write the script, the 28 days it took to film, and the 28 days that are depicted in the actual storyline. Curious, don't you think? And so, the film went on to gross a billion dollars at the box office, and just kidding, it flopped horribly. So then, why are people still talking about Donnie Darko to this day? It came and went at the box office having grossed just $7.5 million on a $4.5 million budget. Of course, it didn't help that the marketing was non-existent. You see, the marketing materials that had been prepared featured a prominent airplane crash. It was, in fact, the central conceit of the marketing. Sadly, the events of 9-11 were too fresh in people's minds, and the studio decided not to air the commercials. It was also too late to spend money repurposing the ads. So instead, Donnie Darko flew under the radar and fizzled out before people even knew it existed. Luckily, home video sales came to the rescue, adding over $10 million to the film's name. It also established a huge fan base. This fandom was also stoked by a website that housed the time travel book from the film, The Philosophy of Time Travel by Roberta Sparrow. This adds an interesting layer to the film that isn't necessarily seen on the screen. So whenever you're watching this offbeat time travel opus, remember that without Drew Barrymore putting her name behind the movie, sticking with the film through tough times, and lending her acting talents, Donnie Darko probably wouldn't have seen the light of day. As a huge fan of Donnie Darko myself, I want to personally thank you, Drew Barrymore, for helping to bring this quirky, mind-bending film to fruition. And with that, I leave you with these words. Cellar Door.